Um, I come from a family of seven here. It's neighborhood, El Barrio, Spanish Harlem. I'm its native son. And we, we took care of ourselves. So my mom would always say, my mom would always say, we might never be rich, but we will always be clean, and we will never go on welfare. So there was absolutely no money. There was no money. And I wanted the things that other teenagers had. You know, I wanted Pumas. I wanted jeans. I wanted to go to the movies every now and then. But there was just no money. So well, what did I do? I started stealing dogs. It was, a, it was a trick that I had learned from a junkie called Eddie. And basically, I would go with my best friend to the Upper East Side. And if you notice, the Upper East Side and Spanish Harlem are right there, back, in, back to back. You walk 20 minutes um, downtown, and you're in the richest richest place on earth. You walk 20 minutes down and you were in one of the poorest, which was El Barrio. So we would walk 20 minutes downtown. We would take a laundry bag and a knife. And, and we would we look for small dog, because you're not going to steal a German Shepherd, because he'll kill you. So we would look for small dogs. And, uh, and then we would cut the leash and stuff the dog in the laundry bag. And then we would just walk casually, walk away. And I would keep the dog in the house. I would keep him in the bathroom, leash to the radiator for like three, four days. And then I would go back around the block, the radius where I stole it, and look for the reward flyer. Once we found the, the reward flyer, I would call up the number. And I remember that even back then, even though I did not know it, even though I did not know it, I, something told me that words had power, that words can save you. And the word that I learned was aimlessly. The word was aimlessly. Because I would call and say, lady, I think we found your dog. He was walking aimlessly. <laughs> in Central Park. And then I would uh, take the dog, but now this time you don't take the dog with your friend, you take the dog with a, little, with a little kid, and his job was to cry. So I would, take, I would take my little cousin, Ralphie, who was very cute, and I would say, Ralphie, if you cry, I give you, I'll buy you a hundred penny candies. And all he would have to do is cry. So when we would go, and it was almost all the time, it was a doorman building, and um, the lady would open the door and say, oh my God, thank you for bringing my dog, but my little my little cousin would, would hold the dog and start crying. And I would say, it's the lady's dog. Okay, I know you like him, but it's the lady's dog. I'll get you one just like it. And the lady would say, oh no, here's, a, here's, here's the reward. I said, no, all right. And um, what made me stop? I'll tell you what made me stop. So what made me stop is one night, I was watching Three's Company reruns with my sisters. And my mom answered the door because two men knocked. It was these two white men with badges. Um, But I played it off, and I just kept looking at the television with my sisters. And I knew something was wrong. And I knew something was wrong. And then my mom took a peek at me, and I knew that she was angry. And I knew that I had been caught. And I started bargaining with God. I said, God, if you give me a second chance, I swear I will stop. I will never do this again. And I respected my parents. I did. And I knew I was going to get it. I was going to get it big. So then my dad called me over, and I went over, and my dad said, didn't we teach you not to take things that are not yours? And I said, yes. And one of the white men who was there said, well, you know, if he has one of them here, we're here to take them back. So my dad just looked at me, and I said, yeah, I have one. So, so I, had, I, had this, uh, I had this dog in the, in the bathroom, and I had told my parents that this was my job. I was a dog sitter, because they, the, they saw me with money. Anyway, so... Um, I brought the dog, I brought the dog, and everybody was just standing still, everybody was just, my mom, my dad, the two white men, and, and I knew something was wrong too. I was like, okay, what, what's happening here? And, and um, the white men were actually there for library books, way overdue library books. 